Welcome, chess enthusiasts, to a realm where strategy meets imagination, where minds clash in the ultimate battle of wits. Prepare yourselves for an extraordinary journey into the world of chess, where every move holds the power to shape destiny. I am your guide, your companion on this grand chess adventure. Get ready to witness mind-boggling tactics, awe-inspiring combinations, and epic battles that will leave you breathless. This is Chess Unleashed. Today, we have an intense match between Iqin Nazir, playing white, and Salpshir, playing black, on chess.com. Let's delve into the strategic maneuvers and tactical brilliance displayed by these players. The game begins with the popular opening move 1, e4, a solid choice that aims to control the center and open lines for the pieces. In response, black counters with 1, e5, mirroring white's move and asserting control over the center as well. Both players are off to a balanced start. Move 2 sees white developing their knight to f3, following a classical approach to peace development. Black responds with 2, nc6, reinforcing the center and preparing to develop their own pieces. The tension builds. Now, white plays 3, bc4, initiating the Italian game. This move targets black c5 pawn, challenging its presence in the center. Black counters with 3, bb4, opting for the solid but less common bishop's variation. The Italian game is one of the oldest and most popular chess openings in the world. It arises after the moves 1, e4 e5 2, nf3 nc6 3, bc4. The main idea behind this opening is to establish a strong presence in the center of the board and develop the pieces harmoniously. White's first move, 1, e4, aims to control the center and create opportunities for quick piece development. In response, black mirrors the move with 1, e5, also vying for central control. On white's second move, 2, nf3, a knight is developed and attacks black's e5 pawn. Black defends the pawn by moving the knight from b8 to c6 with 2, nc6. Now comes the defining move of the Italian game, 3, bc4. The move unleashes the bishop on c1, aiming it directly at black's vulnerable f7 square. By targeting f7, white aims to create imbalances and threats that can lead to tactical opportunities. Additionally, the move allows white to further develop their remaining pieces and maintain a strong central presence. The Italian game offers a rich variety of continuations for both players. Black has several viable responses, including 3, nf6, the two knights defense, and 3, bc5, the giwoko piano. These variations often lead to dynamic and tactical positions with opportunities for both players to demonstrate their strategic understanding and creativity. In the Italian game, white usually follows up with moves like d2, d3 and nc3, consolidating the center and completing piece development. The position can then lead to various pawn structures, including the classic double pawn center with pawns on e4 and d4. The Italian game is known for its classical charm and its ability to create rich middle game positions full of possibilities. It has been played by numerous chess legends throughout history, and its strategic and tactical elements continue to inspire and challenge players at all levels. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced player, exploring the Italian game can provide valuable insights into central control, peace development, and strategic planning. Its versatility and historical significance make it a worthy addition to any chess player's repertoire. Continue to the game, white decides to castle kingside on move 4, securing the safety of their king and bringing the rook into play. Black continues their development with 4, nf6, aiming to control the center and prepare for future pawn breaks. As the game progresses, white plays 5, h3, a move that prevents any potential pin by black's bishop. Both players are carefully positioning their pieces and preparing for the upcoming battle. White's 6. D3 reinforces their center and opens lines for their light-squared bishop. Black responds with 6, b6, bringing their bishop into play and adding more pressure to the center. With 7, a3, white chooses to chase away black's bishop, forcing it to make a decision. Black opts for 7, bc5, maintaining control over the center and preparing for further development. The game continues with a series of logical moves and minor piece maneuvering. Both players show great patience and calculation, considering the positional elements and potential threats. 
Move 17 marks a critical point in the game as White plays 17. Re1, preparing to double their rooks on the e-file. The tension is palpable as the players carefully weigh their options. Black responds with 17, QC7, possibly eyeing an opportunity to counter-attack or unleash tactical possibilities. White continues to solidify their position, making precise moves to maintain control. The game reaches its climax with a brilliant checkmate sequence. White delivers a stunning checkmate on move 34 with 34. QD5, concluding the game in a decisive victory for Ikwen Nazir. What an exhilarating game we witnessed today. Both players displayed impressive strategic planning and calculated moves throughout. Ikwin Nazir's precise execution and well-timed attacks proved to be the turning point, leading to a spectacular checkmate. In this game, we witnessed the importance of proactive peace development and ensuring the safety of the king. White, playing as Ikwin underscore Nazir, demonstrates a strategic approach that leads to a decisive victory. Firstly, we observe White's opening moves, where they efficiently develop their pieces, following the principles of chess. By moving the e2 pawn to e4 on the first move, White seizes control of the center and opens lines for their pieces. Additionally, the subsequent knight development to f3 and bishop development to c4 contribute to a harmonious and active setup. On the other hand, Black's response with 3, BB4, while not necessarily a mistake, doesn't fully prioritize peace development or central control. This gives White an opportunity to continue building their position advantageously. As the game progresses, White continues to prioritize peace development, while Black falls slightly behind in this aspect. Moves like 5, H3 and 6. D3 allow White to solidify their pawn structure and create a strong foundation for further actions. One critical moment arises on move 11 when White plays n5, exploiting Black's underdeveloped position. This move not only attacks Black's light squared bishop, but also indirectly targets the weak f7 square near Black's king. Another crucial lesson is the importance of king safety. White's kingside pawn advance on move 25, h3, may seem like a subtle move, but it demonstrates foresight and caution. By creating a luft, an escape square, for the white king, white ensures its safety and eliminates potential backrank vulnerabilities. The game culminates in a brilliant checkmate by white on move 34, showcasing the power of coordinated peace play and exploiting black's weakened king position. In summary, this game teaches us the significance of proactive peace development and the safeguarding of our king. By prioritizing efficient peace placement and maintaining king safety, we can gain a substantial advantage and capitalize on our opponent's positional weaknesses. As we conclude this epic chess encounter, I invite you, dear viewers, to be a part of the Chess Unleashed community. Share your own thrilling games with us, and let us embark on a captivating analysis together. Your moves, your strategies, your triumphs, they all matter to us. Connect with us in the comments section below, and let's explore the depths of chess together. Remember, the game continues beyond this video. Keep honing your skills, unleash your inner grandmaster, and embrace the beauty of chess. Until next time, this is Chess Unleashed, signing off.